Hi, I'm Sarah Swan and I do videos to help people with their mental health. Today's video is about anxious preoccupied attachment. So why is this important? Um, so right now um, my videos are, it's, it's about mental health but it's also about our relationship with ourselves and relationship with others. And attachment theory is very important because that's basically how we relate to ourselves and others. So anyway, anxious attachment, what is that? And um, yeah, so a lot of times if you have anxious attachment, most of the time you have um, low self-esteem. You have low confidence, um, low self-love, low self-care. Um, you might be self-blaming. You might have a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. You, um, a lot of times you'll place the other person on the pedestal, which um, basically it means that they're better than you and you were worse. So you see them in a positive light, but you see yourself in a very negative light. light. You're very quick to kind of criticize yourself and put yourself down, which is why you have low self-worth and self-esteem. Um, you are very dependent upon others. So you need connection. You want that connection because as you get that connection, it allows you to fulfill a need that you're not able to actually fulfill them yourself. It's very hard for you. And um, so you seek like validation. You want people to see you. You seek approval. Um, you look towards others for how you feel, for what you wanna do in life. And so while you're doing this, you kind of lose yourself. You don't know who you are and you lose yourself to another person. Um, it's, it's this idea of kind of like the people pleasing, the fawning or codependency. And um, you're, you're kind of seeking to yeah, get your stuff approval. Like with me, I was, um, I'm coming from fearful avoidant. And so I had both, um, it, or disorganized. So I have both anxious and avoidant. Um, for me, I was seeking approval with other people. Like I tried to start doing these videos like two, three years ago. And when I didn't get any views, um, because I was, I did get some views, but I basically, I was like, oh, the universe doesn't want me to do this. And so I was basically seeking whether if they liked it, then I was supposed to go that direction. Um, so essentially these types of people, if you're anxious, you are seeking approval. You you might like be part of a group and, and if they wanna do something, you'll do it. You won't even consider whether that's your need or not or whether you like it even. Um, a lot of times because of that, you might lose your identity. You might not know who you are. You're not really connected to the self because you're so connected to the other person. You, you may not know your own needs. Um, I know until like three, four years ago, I didn't know that I even had needs. Like I would have a need, I remember vaguely thinking, oh, this, and then I just repressed it. And so you learn how to kind of focus on the other person, you know exactly what they need and what they want and you do it for them. You're so focused on the other person. Um, even example recently, um, not recently, but like two years ago, I kept on doing things for another person. And um, eventually what happened is, it was almost like I had an invisible scorecard in, in, above his head and I would do things like, I helped him move, I did this, I did that. And it was never reciprocated. And so it was like this idea, if I do this for you, you'll love me. You'll give me more self-worth, you know? And so it's like this idea, like the self-approval again, the validation, needing to be seen, um, getting your confidence from the other person. Um, another thing is, um, if you're anxious, you have low standards. Um, you might have high anxiety. You might have OCD. Um, you might have a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of, uh, negative self-talk, criticizing yourself, judging yourself and low self-esteem because of that. Um, low standards as in like, let's say a guy, I've been there, a guy comes up to you and likes you. And rather than considering whether that guy is a good match for you, you're like, oh, he likes me, so I'm gonna go, go hang out with him, right? But, or even friends, you know, I, I was friends with friends in the past where these friends came up to me and they wanted to hang out with me. And so, of course, I said yes, even though these friends did not like anything that I liked. Um, but I wasn't 
aware of that at the time and I just couldn't phantom it because I needed that connection I needed that the friendship um, and so I made myself fit in rather than actually being my own authentic self um, so yeah you can have low standards and also this idea of authentic self um, you you often because you're trying to fit in you may not know who your authentic self is um, you have a fear of losing relationships um, a lot of the big triggers for anxious attachment is that you really fear abandonment or you fear being rejected um, you might be insecure you might be clingy you might be needy um, I know with me I've been in the past where I overtaxed people or they would ask me how I was feeling and I was like yeah, yeah, yeah they want to hear from me and so like I literally would text like huge paragraphs and as I learned not to do that and to be more secure um, I stopped doing that so much um, you want that attention so as soon as someone gives you just a little glimmer of attention you kind of you know you might take it overboard um, you're also hypersensitive to the other person. You're very aware of what they're doing and how they're feeling, um, but you may not be aware of your own self and how you're feeling. Um, because again, you're putting them on the pedestal. Um, and um, space. Space is also very hard. So if you're anxious attachment, you are seeking attention. You're seeking um, connection. And so you'll have something called activating strategies. Activating strategies are basically strategies that your brain comes up with to cause you to get more connection. So for me, I would have an activating strategy such as text this person or say this to this person or call them up or something or hey, let's do this on Saturday. Let's hang out here. And I would know exactly what that other person wanted. Like I would know his likes and be like, I, I knew his music and I knew what he liked. And so I'd be like, hey, let's do this. And I would choose something that I knew he liked. And so, um, yeah. And so that was my way of trying to connect. Um, and also with the space, going back to the space thing, I kind of got distracted. But <laughs> the space, um, you tend to want that connection so much, that 24-7, that you don't give people space. And this is really bad because if you're anxious, you most likely, especially in relationship, you might be attracting someone avoidant who wants space, which makes it very hard <laughs> to uh, have a have a functional relationship. So, um, but anyway, you want to give them space because when you give people space, it helps people kind of recoup and come back and then the relationship gets even better. Um, um, and then we kind of talked about the self-esteem um, because of the negative self-talk and criticizing yourself and um, putting yourself down and thinking other people are, are better than you, a lot of times your self-esteem is low. Um, and so if you are anxious, um, a good thing to do is to work on your self-esteem. And um, you can just by trying to be a friend to yourself. That's that's the biggest thing you can do. Just be, how would you talk to a friend? And then do that to yourself. Also, like, you can keep a journal where you can do some, like, positive, like, write ten things or five things a day of things you have accomplished or successes or some kind of thing about yourself. Like, what do you like about yourself? Like, very simple kind of thing and just start doing it and that will help you build your self-esteem. Um, you're not aware of your own needs. Again, this is because you're hyper-focused on the other person. And so you're aware of what they want. You're aware of what they like. But when it comes to yourself, not so much. And so I know in the past, I definitely, I didn't even know I had needs until three years ago. Um, doing a lot of self-work. <laughs> so, but you don't know what your needs are. Or you maybe might know your needs, but then you kind of repress them. And again, you you don't pay attention to them and eventually you learn not to pay attention at all and and then you feel like upset and later on and maybe it starts fights or causes a breakup or something happens because you just weren't paying attention to your needs i know with me i had a bunch of needs that were kind of not getting um fulfilled in friendships relationships what whatnot and because i wasn't communicating them that's another thing so a lot of times anxious attachment may not communicate their needs or they don't know how 
or maybe they communicate it by anger. So again, because they repress that need, it comes up and it keeps on building, 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 and then all of a sudden, one day, they just kind of blow up. And the other partner is like, what are you, where is this coming from? Um, so again, not knowing their needs and not being able to communicate them to them. Also self-soothing. So I know this is one big thing that I'm working on um, and I have been working on and I'm getting a lot better is self-soothing. Um, a lot of times they self-soothe through another person and it's hard for them to be able to learn how to self-soothe themselves. So there's ways that you can learn how to do that. Um, so some of it, like for me, I've done journal writing. So basically just connecting to yourself, doing meditations, um, that kind of stuff like helps you self-soothe a little bit. Um, or stepping away from the problem for just a little bit and then coming back because you want to have a calm mind. Egocentric. So this also applies to any of the other insecure attachment. Egocentric means that you're more focused on yourself. You're very subjective. You know how you're you're coming from your perspective and you're not able to objectively see the world and you're not able to see the views of other people and how they're reacting and knowing that their actions are not because of you but because of themselves. And so this is what I mean by egocentric. Um, egocentric can also play a part for people that are more narcissistic because they're also egocentric. They think it's all about them. Um, if you are codependent, you're still egocentric essentially um, because you're still coming from that kind of point of view where if someone does something, you're kind of reactive and you think it's because of you essentially. Um, so, and then let's see, the last thing is, um, an another few things is um, you always want connection. One way that you might try to get that connection is anger. Um, sometimes if you're anxious attachment, you will do anything to get that bond again. And sometimes it might be anger because you're like, oh, this is a way to connect. Um, it might be unconscious. Um, you're also very reactive. A lot of times you have a lot of trauma underneath, like this unconscious stuff goes on underneath and it's trauma. And so it causes you not to be present. So you might be in reality, your partner does something or your friend does something or someone, your coworker does something. And you're, you're not able to be conscious that what they're doing might have a trigger from the past because your brain remembers, your brain remembers um, everything that happened your body remembers everything that happens and so your brain always has a filter and so if something in the past happened that caused this big emotional reaction and then in the present day there's something very similar to it sometimes it might be just a little bit similar and your brain all of a sudden gets triggered and so a lot of times you react the way you reacted before in the present day and you're not really thinking and and really being present and knowing that that experience that you're experiencing right now in the present day is not the past. Um, sometimes it can be very, very similar. And so your brain's kind of warning you that, hey, this could happen again. And so again, you're not able to be present. Um, not saying it is something that is, you know, let's say something's happened in the present day, that person might actually be doing the same thing as the past, but it may not be. Um, and then another thing is, um, so based, so a lot of times this is based off of childhood. So it can change. It can be very flexible. You can have something that causes you to become more anxious later on in life, um, through your experiences. But a lot of times this is like coming from childhood. So for example, in childhood, you might have a mom or some caregiver that gives you attention sometimes, but then pulls away. And, or maybe you'll have one parent that gives you attention, but then the other one doesn't. Um, and so what I imagine, and I've seen this through myself when I was more anxious, and um, I would imagine this mother leaving and then the mom comes back and the child is so scared of the mom leaving that she like, he or she, like holds on for dear life to the mom's legs and doesn't want her to leave. Or I've actually, I used to be a preschool teacher. I've seen kids who literally were in my classroom. This one child, bless his heart, would come in my classroom and just not play. And he would just like be like this and not play, not talk to other kids. 
he was very shy and he he was crying the first like few weeks and he just couldn't handle he had trouble being there but then i noticed one time um we had this like event and all of a sudden the child was a different child because guess what the mom was there and so the child was able to play and so this child had a more anxious kind of preoccupied disposition um, dis disposition and so obviously um a child can have anxious but they can learn how to become more secure through their experiences so because it's like the repetition um or like i said it can change throughout your life you could be more secure and then all of a sudden you become more anxious because of some kind of life event that traumatizes you essentially so that's how i see the anxious attachment so before i leave i would like to give you a little quote and i'm sorry that this video is a little bit long so i'm working on that so um bear with me so Anyway, the quote is kind of like if it was told from anxious attachment person. So, I worry I'm not enough for my partner. Place you on a pedestal. Overly focus on you. And completely depend upon you for my happiness. I fear losing you. I have a hard time identifying my needs and communicating them with you. And because of this, I often lose myself in the relationship. And so that is my quote. So anyway, if you like this, please like and subscribe and share out to friends. And um, I will be doing more videos. And like I said, my business is, um, I want to be able to help people gain a deeper connection with themselves and with other people. Um, so through relationships and also through the creative arts. So if you are loving creative arts, um, I do artwork and I'm learning ukulele and um, you'll see some of those videos of like just learning um so yeah I would um my goal is to eventually in integrate that into this so anyway I hope you enjoyed and thank you